good morning again. Um, I guess it would help if I turned this thing on, wouldn't it? Sorry. I always get a little nervous. I always check that thing about a dozen times a morning to make sure, like, when we're, when we're singing, that this is not on so that you can't hear me sing, because that would scare everyone off. Um, there it is. There it is. Sorry. And I, I keep checking it. I forget to turn it on. <laughs> that, was, that wasn't right. Sorry. I'm a little rusty. Right? I've been being off for a week, so I'm sorry. But anyway, good to see everybody this morning. Like I said earlier, I uh, hope you're enjoying the weekend, having a happy July 4th. Um, starting a new series today, Beautiful Design. And before we kind of leave the, the Man Up series just for a second, um, I do want to say this. There is, we're working on right now, um, oh yeah, let me back up just a second. This fall we'll start community groups again. And so we haven't been doing community groups. So I want to I just sort of put a bug in your ear right now to begin preparing and praying and thinking about uh, becoming a part of a community group uh, this fall when we start those back up. And this is so important. I think through this series, when we talk about God's design for us and God's perfect design for us and, and for our roles and our purpose in life, um, living life together through community is, is extremely important. And so I just kind of want to encourage you to be praying and thinking about that. But having said that, as we finish up our Man Up series and, and, and sort of a bridge maybe into that, um, we're working on right now a, a men's uh, a study, a men's Bible study for just a, a short few weeks. And, and men, um, and this is not ladies, we'll certainly we work on something for, for you later on. And we're going to talk a lot about, uh, about ladies in this particular series. But men, there's a, you know, we, we just sort of felt like that there was a, um, something that we wanted to, to go a little further in. So there's, we're working on a men's study right now. Um, we've got a real catchy name for it. It's called Sons of Agony. Um, I don't know if you can, well, that really, you know, um, kind of says anything about the series, but hopefully it won't be agony to go through it, but, but I'm kind of developing this. I'm a, I was a huge, or when it was on, I was a huge Sons of Anarchy fan. I don't know if you guys ever watched that. It's not a really great show, but, but I was a big fan of that when it was on, and so I'm um, sort of playing off of that theme. So guys, be thinking about that. We'll have some more information. Uh, coming up in the next week and the next couple of weeks to start that sort of a, between a bridge time between now and when community groups start. So if you might be interested in that, get you involved in that in some way. Um, and we, we talk about doing a couple of fun things, just, just kind of got things hanging out. But um, just be thinking about that and praying about that. But our new series, Beautiful Design, we're going to be talking about what is God's design for us? What is God's purpose for us? And how, how is it that we... How is it that we know that? How, how do we figure those things out as men and women um, throughout our lives? And one of the things, and you saw it in the bumper video, uh, one of the things that we find is that culture is always shifting and changing. Our, our culture, I mean, think about it. Think about what was acceptable in culture a decade ago, two decades ago, right? Uh, 50 years ago. What, what culture said was right and, and acceptable. Um, I don't know if I, I saw a great movie, or I thought, I don't want to say great, it was, a, it was a really good movie, I thought. Um, just the other night, I went to see uh, Free State of Jones. I don't know if you, anybody, anybody seen that yet? Anybody seen that? No? Have I seen that? Okay, you saw it. Yeah, it was a really good movie. I, I felt like I really liked it. And, and one of the things that we look at, and I was thinking about this series as I was watching the movie, and about how things have changed so much, but what was acceptable at that particular time in our country, in our culture, not only acceptable, but was protected by law, and we're going to talk a little about this later, but things that were actually protected by law in our society, we now realize how wrong that was. But at that time, that was, it, was, it was accepted in the way that people lived their lives. And, and so when we look at society, we see society is constantly changing and telling us different things. When we look to them to tell us who we should be, as men and women, what we find is a constantly changing message. Always changing. But here's what doesn't change. The Bible. God's Word doesn't change. The Bible teaches us exactly who we are. Created equally, but uniquely. Think about that. Created equally, but uniquely. God's beautiful design for us is true. His design for us is perfect. And it leads us to joy, and it leads us to flourish as human beings. His design is perfect for us. Now, in this series, we're going to tackle several different questions. Um, why were we made? Why, you know, why were we made? Um, how do we know the purpose of our lives? How has God uniquely made them? 
How are men and women made different, and what are the roles given by God? And the thing about it is, even though, the, even though we were made equally, but uniquely, the truth of the matter is, society is beginning to blur the lines a bit. It, it really is. Society is beginning to blur the lines about what, what, are, what the roles of men and women are, and what the purpose of our lives are, and even further, who gets to determine the purpose of our lives. Our roles as men and women have importance and purpose. But we live in a society today that is beginning to value tolerance over truth. You know, in many cases, it, it, it's, even, it's even become acceptable in our society to have even more than, than two categories, right, uh, of gender in many cases. There's no longer an objective truth from a creator about who we are and what our purpose is. We believe that the creation itself can determine its own purpose and its own role in life. And, and when we do this, when we get to that place where we say that, that the creation itself can then determine its own role and its own purpose in life, what we do is we create a, an endless subjective spectrum in our lives where, where people can do whatever they want. Now, the problem with this the problem with this is that our Creator did create us how He saw best. He did create us in a way that He saw best. God's, God's purpose, God's design for us was perfect. God's design for us is perfect still today. But yet, we have destroyed that perfect and beautiful picture and that perfect design of what we, are, what we were set out to do. Now, that's kind of some heavy stuff. And, here, and here's the thing. We, we've got to approach this topic, I think, in a very specific way. And we must always approach this topic in grace and in truth. Always with grace and truth. And I'll be honest with you. I think a lot of times uh, in our society, that, that's something that's missing. I think that's something that's missing. I, th I, think, I think we approach this topic many times from a different place. And what we want to get across in this particular series is that that regardless of people's views, we always want to approach them with grace and with truth toward one another. Because that's what we've been given. As Christ followers, that's what we have been given. But in order to do that, we must first grow in our understanding of what it actually means to walk in the design that the Creator had for us. We, for, us for us to actually give that grace and for us to, give, to live in that truth, we first must understand what that truth is. We have to gain an understanding. You know, sin basically ruined the world. It, it ruined uh, the ability or, or, or ruined a lot of people's lives in terms of walking in the design that people have, that God created for us. It ruined our lives. It ruined this perfect design that God put forth. People have real struggles. Sin coming into the world for all of us Give us all something to struggle with, right? We all sin. People that we approach about these topics are going to have real struggles, real battles that they are fighting, regardless of what it is. And it might not be the same struggles that you have, but you're going to struggle with something, and they are going to be struggling with something. All of us fall short of what it means to be a man or a woman of God. And all of us at some point in our lives have rejected that call to fulfill that purpose. We don't fully understand our purpose as God has made us. Now, and, and what we really need to do is we need to step up, and I'm going to say this word very carefully, seek to understand the truth. When, when we seek something, we are actively looking for it, right? When we seek something, we're not just, we're not being passive. We're, we're actively looking for that understanding. So, so we need to step up and seek to understand the truth so that then we can lovingly point others toward the forgiveness of Christ. So, so throughout this series, we're going to seek to understand how to walk in his purpose, how to walk in his design, and how to experience the fullness of life and to glorify God. But before we get into to, to even more questions, We've got to ask ourselves one question today, and I think this is the question that we kind of have to begin to answer today. And it actually leads me to a couple of other questions beyond this. And that question is this. Why does God 
get to determine our role. Think about that for a second. Why does God, why is it that God gets to determine our role in life? And I think that leads to a couple of other questions. Um, how do I know that there is an objective purpose for my life? Why shouldn't people be able to subjectively determine their own desires? Right? I think those are valid questions and, and things that we need to understand going forward. But here's the thing. The reason that we can trust God for objective truths is because he is the designer and the creator. He's the designer and creator. That's why the standard never changes. If we continue to look at society to tell us how we should be as a man or how we should be as a woman and what our role is, if we continue to look at society, it will always change. But if you're looking for an objective truth, the standard that never changes, it's God. Because he is the designer and the creator. We're going to be in Genesis 1 today for a few verses. And, and, and if you want to look at the very beginning, very beginning, first verse of Genesis, first verse of the Bible, very simple. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I think sometimes we, we kind of we look at that and say, oh yeah, that's nice and everything. But think about this. God created all things out of nothing. Now, I don't think, I think in reading this, I kept thinking about, well, how do I, what is nothing? You know, and there's never, a, there's never a point in our lives that we ever get to, the under, get to sense that understanding of what nothing is. Because there's always something around. But God created all things out of absolutely nothing. Right? And when you are the creator, you get to determine the purpose. Give me an example. Oh, I didn't bring my phone in. All right, your iPhone, right? Your iPhone. When you, when you have a problem with your iPhone, who do you go to, right? Who, 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 when you have a real problem with the phone, who do you go to? You go back to Apple, right? You go back to the people that created the phone. The, the, the iPhone, when you use it, when you try to use it for something that it wasn't designed to be used for, it doesn't work very well, does it? Because the iPhone was actually created for a certain purpose, right? When, when you manufacture or create something in our world today, we're creating it for a purpose. And when, it, when we try to use it for things that it wasn't designed for, it doesn't work. Or when it tears up because of that, we, we, we have to go back to the, to the maker. We have to go back to the manufacturer because they're the ones that actually design it and put the purpose in action for that device. For whatever it may be. But the thing about what the world that we live in now, the world, the culture... Ourselves, we can never determine how we should live because we weren't the ones who designed the purpose. We, we were the creation. We were not the ones who designed the purpose. So we look to God for our purpose. We look to God for how we should operate, how we should operate properly. And when we see how man and woman were created with a common purpose, Purpose, a common purpose, expressed, excuse me, expressed in different roles, and then we'll understand how to fulfill those roles. Look with me, if you would, in Genesis 1, uh, verse 26 and 27. We read this. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. What we need to understand is that man and woman were created in the image. We have become, we are the image bearers of God. That gets me to my bottom line today, and it's this. To understand our purpose, we must first understand that we are all image bearers of our creator and made for a relationship with him. We, you ever, I mean, I, and I'll be honest with you, I, I, through my life I haven't thought about this a whole lot, but we are the image bearers of God. We are created by God in his name. Now, we're set apart from creation, okay? There's, there's no question about that. We as, we as man and me as woman, we are set apart from creation. We're set apart uh, emotionally, 
Uh, we're set apart um, uh, mentally. We're set apart spiritually. So we, we as humans are, are set apart from all the rest of creation. We are, we are created in the image of God. Now, God values, obviously, all life on this earth. And we're called to be stewards of the things with which we have been entrusted. We are called for that. But human life is at the top of the list because we are the image bearers of Christ. Every day, everything that we do, we are bearing his image. In Genesis 9 6, we read this. Whoever sheds human blood by humans shall their blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made mankind. Now, there are, there, are, there are tremendous implications when you think about this. Tremendous implications when you think about the fact that we are his image bearers. There are implications for us in how we live our lives every single day. There are implications for the entire world. I mean, think about, think about all the things in our world that, that I think really have come about because people don't understand that we bear the image of God in our lives. Think about all of the wrongs. Suicide, abortion, racism, genocide, sex trafficking, social injustice. All of these, all of these issues truly stem from an idea that we, we don't realize we are the image bearers of God and we don't value that and we don't value others in life. We are to protect God's image and represent him in how we live our lives and in how we treat others. We have to represent him in how we love others as image bearers. When we think about all those, and I know some of those, we, we, we look at those and think, well, you know, those are kind of far off and maybe we don't deal with those here, uh, you know, here in this community on a daily basis, but, it, but it's closer than you think. And it's not always just just big things like this and how we treat each other each and every day, how we love one another each and every day. We are a representation of that image. And remember this, because we are made in God's image, he sent his son to die for our sins, for all people, for all people. He sent his son to die. We need to share Christ with all people because he is calling each person each and every person in this world to walk in his beautiful and perfect design that means having a relationship with him and glorifying him. Every one of us. And we have that opportunity in representing that image to everyone that we come in contact with and everyone that we deal with on a daily basis. You know, I mentioned some of those, those issues before. As image bearers, we need to be aware of those issues that we can step in and get involved in, even, even if it's in a small way. Even if it's just in a very small way. For instance, sex trafficking. That's something that we, that we don't necessarily think about maybe a lot here in this particular community. But think about praying, praying for people that, 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 um, that porn and prostitution and things like this disappear from this earth. Because those are things that drive this particular industry. And if we can pray, if we can work to eliminate those things and eliminate the desires for those things, think about how sex trafficking would be affected throughout the world, even if it's just in a small pocket. Racism. Racism. How do we, how do we treat people each and every day? How do we, do we look for opportunities to be around people who, who are different than us? Do we treat everyone that we meet, everyone regardless of, 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 of how they are different from us, do we treat them with respect? Do we honor them as an image bearer of God? Gender equality. Another issue, something that we can deal with each and every day. We just, we just came out of the Man Up series. But men, think about this. How do we honor our wives? The men that are single, how do you, how do you honor and respect Women that maybe that you're, you're dating with or are friends with. We need to look at women because as co-heirs to the kingdom that God has promised us. We need to embrace that women are different but equal. And so as men, we can do that 
right? Yeah, women, uh, you know, women, you can fight the stereotype that men are uh, incapable, I guess, in some ways. And guys, we may have some work to do on that ourselves. But women fight that stereotype that men are incapable of doing certain things and have high expectations of how men should treat you. Don't let yourselves be devalued. If you're single in here or some of, our, some of our youth, when you're looking at someone that you're, you're going to have a relationship with or date, have high expectations for how that man treats you. Don't devalue yourself because you are made in the image of God. I think as we go through this, we really need to look at spending time praising God and reflecting on how powerful God is. How powerful He is. How amazing he is. How he made everything out of nothing. I know I said that a little bit earlier, but then I think that sometimes we get lost on that. He is the creator. He made everything out of nothing and chose to make us. He gave us a design. God gave us a purpose. God reveals his purpose to us through his word and through the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. You know, I, I talked to, um, I used to do this when I was coaching, and I do it some now with, with a lot of our athletes here. And I tell them they're, when they're going out to play games or when they're, um, you know, anytime they're in the community or anything like that, that they're not just representing themselves. You know, when you're, when you're, a, when you're a Blue Devil, when you're playing here for the high school, you're not just representing yourself as an individual. This, this goes for, for any group. Um, you know, whether it's our mock trial team or our, our drama department or our band or, or anybody that has anything to do that's associated with Unicoi County High School. And I tell them, I say, look, you're not just representing yourself. You're representing your school. You're representing your community. You're representing your family. So when we go and we do things, we're always carrying that, that representation of something else, people who are behind us, people who are there with us. And it's very important to me that the people that go out and represent our school understand that. That everything that they do isn't just a reflection on them. It's a reflection on our school. It's a reflection on our program as a whole. I think for us, when we think about this idea of image bearer, of being image bearers of God and how it is that we represent Him, I think that's something that's, that, that we have to, be, have to be aware of and have to understand at a greater level. We have to begin to prepare and think about how we feel God is calling us to represent him as an image bearer and what it looks like to step into that role. So as we go through this series, I want to encourage you uh, to be here every week and, and listen. And each time, uh, we're going to take a little bit different slant, a little bit different topic about, about what it is, that, how it is that God designed us and what that purpose is. For us in our lives. Because if, if we don't understand it, if we don't completely understand it, or, or try to, to seek to completely understand it, then, then how can we then go forward in grace and truth to those who, quite frankly, don't have any understanding at this point in their lives? 